My Own Story begins in Newfoundland on Wednesday, September 21st. Well, I'm on the road again, and it's raining. I knew it was coming, so no surprise there. I'm heading south towards Port of Basque. Uh, I'm hoping to reach the, uh, the ferry terminal tonight before it gets dark. And my front tires, you'll probably notice my front tires or my front wheels are a little loud. I had the bearings replaced within the last year, so I don't know what's going on, but uh, I'm hoping they're going to last me a little longer. It shouldn't be an annual event to, uh, to change wheel bearings, so I'll find out when I get to a cheap dealership. But I know the hurricane's coming up the coast right now. I'm going to expect a lot of rain, but I'm hoping it's not going to be too bad tomorrow because uh, if it gets too bad, they're going to cancel the ferry and I'm going to be stranded. So, fingers crossed. Just before dusk, a strange cloud appeared from the west, bringing with it a blinding storm with gale force winds. I didn't film this, as both hands were white knuckled on the steering wheel. Well, I made it to the ferry terminal. I'm just in amongst the trucks here right now. A lot of people wanting to get out off the island. You can see all the people here. I think these are all the ones that have the, the midnight sail. Sails all night and uh, they get in in the morning. The, it's not bad here right now. The gale force winds that I drove through are over. They subsided a little bit, which is good news. Uh, it's still raining a little bit, but not too bad. But it was pretty terrible when I was uh, driving up there. I mean, it was really, really intense. I don't want to do that again. Uh, but I think what's on everybody's mind right now is the hurricane. And it's looking really, really bad. Especially Nova Scotia, and that's exactly where I'm heading. Hopefully, I mean, I'm assuming that the ferry is gonna sail tomorrow, but who knows, my luck with ferries hasn't been that great lately, so uh, let's hope it will. Anyway, I'm gonna just hang tight here, just stay in the trailer and uh, see what happens in the morning. And, now that I have a signal, I can listen to the weather reports and the news. So, I think that's it for tonight. Well, being sandwiched in a parking lot full of running semis all night is not my idea of a good campsite or boondocking. I'd even take a Walmart at this point, but what I've got is a ferry terminal and all of these trucks, I guess a lot of them are refrigerated trucks, so they have to keep them running. It's a little noisy. Don't expect I'm gonna sleep very well. And it's still pouring rain. Sort of the worst of all worlds. Well, no, it's not because at least there's no hurricane right now. <laughs> Things are already always worse somewhere else, right?
As expected, it was a restless night. And by first light, I had moved up in queue for the last sailing before the storm arrived. Well, the ferry's almost ready to sail. I'm gonna board in a few minutes. Uh, weather is actually good. It's foggy, but there's no wind. It's that ominous calm. You gotta watch for it. It was a huge relief when I was given the signal to board. Had it been canceled, I would have been stranded in Port of Basque that quaint little town that would lie in ruin two days later. Back in the belly of the beast. Every square inch of the cargo deck was spoken for. Well, there's not much to see. It's all fogged in. That was the foghorn. While waiting in Port of Basque, I did get a chance to track the storm forecast using the Windy app. That's Fiona, just east of Florida. By sliding the date to Friday, and then to Saturday, I had a better idea of what might be lying ahead. And it didn't look good at all. Back in Nova Scotia, weather looks pretty cloudy, but it's dry and not a lot of wind yet. Well, I made it to camp. I'm at the Myra campsite one more time, and uh, I made it here just after dark. Ferry arrived, I think about 6.30 in Sydney. And I got here about 7 just as it was getting dark. And when I phone for the reservation, they say they are closing this place down as of noon tomorrow. And it sounds like a lot of campsites are probably the same policy. They're all closing down before the hurricane gets here. So that's still, that, that doesn't give me a good feeling. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to be. And I know uh, as I was uh, going across on the ferry, there's a lot of people trying to find hotels and being told outrageous prices for what's available. So uh, yeah, big concern. Um, just to show you, here's where the hurricane is right now. That's Fiona. And uh, where is, okay, let me just go down here. I'm right here. <laughs> this is Nova Scotia right here. And it's, it's coming up, there's no doubt about that. And I'm just sort of going over the map right now. I am in the worst spot. <laughs> I'm right about here. So this is uh, Sydney right here. I'm just below Sydney. This is Cape Breton Island. And it's right now, as I hear it, it's supposed to get the worst impact of the hurricane. However, it's supposed to cover the entire province. So 
I'm not quite sure. I know I, I can't be here. This is the worst place to be. And so I'm going to try to get over to at least this side of the province in the morning. But there's so many unknowns. I don't know if the gas stations are closing down. Um, I couldn't get gas. Um, as soon as I get off the ferry, it was dark and I just cannot travel at night. So hopefully in the morning, the gas stations are going to stay, stay open. Uh, I'm going to take a route where there will be gas stations. And from what I know now, at least, or at least what they're predicting, I should be okay until Friday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon is when the winds are really going to start. So I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous. Not quite sure what I'm going to do yet, but uh, I am trying to be as informed as possible. And uh, I do have at least a bit of a safety plan, but I'm still nervous. There was a crescent moon in the sky that night as well as a few swift moving clouds. Not wanting to take a chance, I tightened down my window cover before retiring for the night. Well, it's Friday, September 23rd. And uh, I guess it's the first day of fall. And I guess fall is going to come in. Is that like a lion roaring? <laughs> because it's today that the hurricane is going to start making its appearance up here in Nova Scotia. Uh, it's just before 7 in the morning. I'm just getting some sandwiches ready. I don't think I'm going to be making many stops. I'm in one of the worst places to be right now. And uh, I got to get out of here. I'm not going to mess around. Uh, it's a good possibility I could get right out of the hurricane zone today. But I'm going to at least get to the edge of it. You know, it was amazingly warm last night. I guess uh, the hurricanes brought the warm Pacific moisture. It's very humid. And like this morning, it's 20 degrees uh, Celsius, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why I'm not wearing my jacket right now. Uh, I know it's going to get a little worse, but right now it's nice and warm. It's a You'd think it would be a really nice day to do some hiking, but uh, I think I'm going to be doing a lot of driving. It felt strange to see Myra Park abandoned, as it was filled with RVs just a short time ago. Road crews were already out, trimming the trees that might block roads during the storm. Concerned that the Trans-Canada might be gridlocked with people trying to leave the hurricane zone, I decided to take a different route along the south shore of Bradore Lake on Highway 223. This took me to Little Narrows and something I wasn't expecting. I'm at Little Narrows and there's one more ferry I have to take get across the uh, the water. I hope it's the last ferry I see in a long time. It's about 9.30 and the rain has started. The wind has started. It's a little rough. But I think as long as I get across this and I get across the Canso Causeway, I should be okay.
short time later, I joined back up with the Trans-Canada Highway. Although Cape Breton Island has a population of almost 150,000, there is only one bridge that joins the rest of Nova Scotia. Well, this is good. I'm just going over the Canso Causeway. I mean, if there was a storm surge, this could be one of the places you really don't want to be because it could be submerged. I don't know. But uh, I'm no longer on the island. I'm on the mainland now. Probably my last fill up. It's uh, still raining, but it's not too bad right now. I'm uh, in New Glasgow. The traffic is starting to get a little worse. There's a little bit, a little bit of gridlock. People are still trying to get out of here. But I was worried that uh, the gas stations might close down soon, so I figured this is the time to do it. Because if they are, there's going to be lineups in, in whatever is open. I don't need food, but I do need a bathroom break. Well, I've just taken a little bit of a breather at a gas station. Um, <laughs> kind of need a break, and I needed to check and see what the forecast was. It's actually looking a little bit better right now, although if I look at my wind app, Hopefully you can see that. It's still down there, and I'm just up there right now. Um, I shouldn't have to stop. I've got gas, which is good, and I've got uh, a fuel can as well that I filled up. So uh, next stop should just be finding a place to camp or just stay for a little while until this blows over. So let's, uh, hopefully I can find something. They have not shut down the gas stations, which is good. I don't need groceries. I just need a place to chill. That's where I'm going. Although most of the traffic had already found safe shelter, there was a surprising amount of traffic entering the storm zone. These were the emergency crews from out of province who came in advance to help restore downed lines. Well, I guess it comes as no surprise that big RVs like this one were in a real hurry to escape the wind. By late afternoon, all was calm and I thought I was out of the danger zone. So under the shadow of the wind turbines, I made a stop at the last exit before New Brunswick. Well, this is nice. Calm, quiet, beautiful little garden. It's not too cold. It's a little cool, just jacket weather. And just a very slight breeze. But it's a really nice, peaceful place to relax. There's some roses and uh, even some apples on the trees. Uh, beautiful. However, this peacefulness is not going to last because in a few hours all hell's going to break loose because Fiona is on its way and it's going to be right here very shortly. This is a, an info center, like a tourist center. It's supposed to be a rest stop, however, I asked and uh, there's no overnight camping. It says there's a sign over there. So you can rest a little bit, but you can't stay all night. So I gotta find another spot. And uh, I think there's a picnic area near here that I can actually camp. But for now, I'm just gonna enjoy the peace and quiet of this beautiful little garden. 
You know, when things get really stressful, you need to just calm down a little, relax, and smell the roses. <sighs> the world's at peace. Now being in that namaste moment, I calmly scoured the horizon looking for a safe place to camp. And what could be more appropriate than to seek shelter near a wind farm? Well, it looks like this is going to be my camp for the night. Um, there is an exposed hill right here, like a field. There are some trees on that side, but the wind's coming this way, and that's why I've got the Jeep pointed in that direction. And the same with the trailer. I want to point right into the wind, but I also have just a little bit of an angle, like a convex. Uh, I didn't want to go this way, you know, make a cup and, uh, and trap the wind in, so I've just gone a little bit that way. I don't know if that's going to help or not, we'll see. And uh, it's a location that if the wind does change, I can just move a little bit more ahead and, uh, and just face the wind whenever it does change. I can feel it coming right now. It's, it's cool breeze. It's, it's not very strong right now, but I know it's going to come. Now, for debate is whether or not I should have the tow vehicle and the trailer hitched up together. I'm saying yes. Some people may say, well, you should, you know, if, if the uh, trailer was to tip over, it's going to take the Jeep with it. But I'm thinking of it this way. If I have to get the hell out of here really quickly, I don't want to be hitching up the trailer. I want to just go. So I'm not unhitching. I'm not taking the chain off or anything like that. I am going to put the stabilizers down, but that's it. So hopefully that's going to help. But I guess time's going to tell. I first checked around the trailer for items that might be compromised in a windstorm. Well, I don't see anything that could come loose, but... Oh, hold on a sec. That's kind of loose. Well, it's about 6.15, it's starting to get dark, and it's starting to rain, so it's probably the last chance I'll get to shoot outside. You can see in the background there's a, a flag, and it's just starting to wiggle a little bit. There is a little bit of a wind, but not much. I expect in the next couple of hours things are going to get a little crazier. And let me just show you my wind app here. And that's where we're at right now. That's Fiona. And up here is Nova Scotia. It's probably, I don't know, I'd say about 100, 150 miles, maybe 200 kilometers uh, from the coast. And uh, things are gonna start happening pretty quickly. Anyway, I gotta batten down the hatch. I won't be able to have a coffee in the morning. Unless it's an iced coffee. There is a certain twist of irony here, because in one of my earlier bad weather videos, I also featured a train gently rolling by before a change was about to happen. Call it foreshadowing, I guess. Well, okay, it's officially nighttime. It's uh, about seven o'clock, 
and I'm just going to go through a list of uh, I guess my emergency preparedness list for a hurricane like I have any experience really I don't um, just a few common sense items and uh, I was trying to figure out something that would be unique if you're caught in a hurricane and you're in a small camper uh, just don't be in a small camper in a hurricane that's that's my number one advice but if for some reason it does happen to you then uh, a couple of suggestions uh, top of my list is a, a tarp and duct tape uh, I, I always have duct tape anyway but the tarp you may not have thought of uh, just a small tarp if something blows off like the vent or a window cracks or, or something happens like that you can just cover it right over with uh, with the t with the tarp or cut it up in pieces if you only need a small amount and the duct tape now duct tape is probably not going to stick if it's wet so again another thing is to make sure you have some towels kicking around so you can dry it quickly so that your duct tape can actually stick um, some no brainers uh, like I've got a little radio where is it somewhere in here where is it he says that's a good sign anyway here I think is my radio uh, with the right zipper here yes fully charged I did charge it up I'm not that dumb but uh, in case the power goes out and you still want to find out what's going on which is always a good thing you can't always rely on your cell phone um, cell phone of course is on the list as well but uh, having old school stuff is really an advantage because yeah if all the power went off and there's no internet connection people are gonna freak out but guess what that happens you got to be prepared for it uh, flashlight duh I've got one here I've got one in my little backpack here as well um, other things I've got in the backpack I'll just sort of show you here is a first aid kit in the backpack I also have a first aid kit up in the camper up in the top shelf there and uh, other things I got a pair of gloves in here oh rope uh, if duct tape doesn't work rope or wire is also a good idea uh, some snacks of course and gloves now I've got these gloves here uh, but I also have oh, where are they these big rubberized gloves um, if you've got to do something outside and you don't want to cut yourself these are really handy plus it's probably going to be a little cold out there uh, other things uh, I think that's oh okay here's another thing oh that yeah now this is a big thing power 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 I got tons of power all over the place uh, I've got this little solar um, uh, power station or whatever you want to call it uh, can charge up my phone handy to have underneath here I have my Jackery it's charged up in the trailer I also have the lithium battery that it is fully powered I think um, yeah well it's about 90% right now and of course there's the battery in the tow vehicle so lots of power you can never have enough power oh and batteries you got to have batteries um, I got some batteries here batteries all over the place so power is important definitely put that on your list um, other than that oh some rubber boots if you gotta go outside <laughs> there's no point in getting your feet soaked all the time bring some rubber boots so if you have to go outside for something at least you're not gonna have to you know constantly be in have wet feet all the time uh, and water I mean, that's obvious uh, you know water here got water in my kettle even though I can't use my kettle because I've turned the propane off just in case um, and I think that's the basics of it there's probably things I forgot but the chargers make sure everything's charged up make sure your phone's charged up the radio's charged up and that you're charged up so that you can make it through <laughs> this uh, you know in, in Murphy's Law this one is going to be at its worst in the middle of the night so <laughs> make sure you got something to do because it's going to be a long night not going to get much sleep
Okay, it's time to check in. You might be hearing a little bit of wind out there and you certainly can hear the rain. It's been raining constantly for the last couple hours. It's 9.20 p.m. Friday and uh, so far so good. It's not too extreme. The, the, the wind's sort of been going up and down. I'd say at its peak it's probably about 30 kilometers an hour, about 20 miles per hour. And uh, the temperature has gone down. Right now it's about 10 degrees uh, Celsius, which is, I don't know, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. This morning it was nice and warm, but now it's cooling down, which is why there's condensation on the windows. It's colder out there. But so far, so good. I'll just show you the Windy app. That's the hurricane right there. I think it's supposed to be class one in parts of Nova, Nova Scotia. And this is Nova Scotia, mostly in the green. That's not because it's land, it's only, it only means that it's low wind. The worst winds are the, the, uh, the blue, the purple, and the white. And it's coming up really close. So uh, yeah, the winds are gonna howl. It's just a matter of time. It is now midnight and it's getting really bad. Um, a few seconds ago the trailer really shook and I've been watching the windows sort of bow in and out. Really, really making me nervous. Um, my exit strategy, <laughs> I have a bag of stuff, the most, most important stuff. If a window sort of pops out or something, then I'm just gonna run for the uh, the Jeep. I think the Jeep is probably safer, but for now, I'm staying in here. I know it's still gonna get a lot worse because uh, the eye of the storm doesn't make landfall for at least two hours. Oh, and by the way, it was the Equinox. Happy Equinox. <laughs> it's no longer summer, that's for sure. You see it, it just stops. It goes down to almost nothing. And then all of a sudden like, bam, it'll just go right up to full intensity. It's, it's like the, you know, the wind is trying to find some little weakness you know, some little crack or some little cavity that it can rip apart. It's very unnerving. Okay, this is getting too crazy. I'm not in the right position. It's too much to one side and the, the water's pouring in the door. So I got to get out there and move things quickly. where everything went later. I don't know where the step is or the boards. Okay. This, I can't see with this thing on there. Okay, reverse. Got to face the right way, right into the storm, and I wasn't. Okay. Oh, look at the tree. Let's 
try that. Oh my god. Okay. Am I gonna get everything? This is not fun. Ah crap. What hoodie you wanna get? Okay, zip up. There's two stabilizers down. Come on. Oh. There's one's there. And oh, come on, get it in there. Okay. Oh. Well, wasn't that fun? Get back inside. Oh, oh God. Oh. I sure don't want to do that again. Whew. It was getting really bad. The, the water was coming in under the door. The problem is I wasn't pointing north. I thought I was, but I wasn't. I relied on an app. Big mistake. All I had to do was go into my emergency bag and get a real compass to find out I was off. So I had to put the stabilizers up, I had to put the jack up, I had to go out there and move everything to the right position. Now even though the rain and the wind is more intense right now, it's more stable. I'm not rocking back and forth and water's not coming in this window and in the door. But it's still getting a little bit more intense. <laughs> I'm not sleeping anytime soon, even though I'm in my pajamas, but my pants are soaking, boy. Ah, oh boy, a night to remember. Oh, boy. Wow. I think I felt the solar panel move that time. It's really, really intense now. It's two o'clock. Wow. Two ten. I think it's close to its peak wind speed right now. Now I can see this. According to this app, it has made landfall the uh, eye of the storm. It is right on the edge of Nova Scotia right now. So it's, it's kind of gale force winds right now. It's probably not hurricane force, but that doesn't matter. It still sucks to be in. And it's worse when it's at night. I mean, I can't see anything out my window. Uh, I do still see 
some lights are on over there. But it doesn't seem like there's as many lights on. I. I mean, obviously people that are home are turning their lights off, but I got a feeling there might be some power shortages. I, on the on the, the news, there, there certainly is. I think what the last report said that 40% of Nova Scotia has lost power. It could be 50 or 60 now, I don't know. But this is not fun. I'm really, really tired. And I know I'm not going to be able to sleep, but I'd really like to see daylight. And it's not going to come for another five hours. I just, uh, I'm just trying to relax. It's not easy to relax in a hurricane or a tropical storm, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. It's just rough. Let's see what it does in another couple hours. So right now, it's super strong. And although I'm pointed in the right direction now, right into the storm, the trailer still shakes. And every once in a while, it'll just vibrate, howl. And it's not letting up. I think this is getting close to the peak. <sighs> you never want to go through this. And all I can do is just sort of lie here. There's nowhere I can really go. I mean, if something happened, there is. There's a house just across there. So there is shelter if I have to, but I think I'd get into the Jeep first. Whoa. I'll be glad when this is over. Seriously. And, uh, I'm just kind of wiped out right now, to be honest with you. What have I got myself into? I know a lot of people are going to ask, why didn't you keep going? Another two hours, it wouldn't be as bad. Well, two hours that way is far worse. You want to see what scary looks like? Look at that. It's made landfall. Whoa. I certainly feel it. Rocking. The wind directions change. I don't know what to 
do. I made it through the night. The storm isn't over yet. It was a brutal night. It's only seven o'clock. The sun's just coming up, but it's still stormy out there. And uh, the direction has changed, so now hitting my trailer on the side so whether I like to or not I got to go out and at least move the trailer I'm not looking forward to this you're not gonna believe this That is intense. Look, look out there. Look at the tree. Oh, everyone knows it's windy. Oh boy.
Ah, finally, the storm is subsiding. I want to get out of here. I've had it. So what did I learn? Well, duh, first of all, don't mess with hurricanes or tropical storms or whatever you want to call them. They're nasty business. They're unpredictable. And uh, unlike something like a, a twister, which usually only happens for a few seconds, a hurricane can last for hours and hours, a full day. Like this one, it just is not going to end probably at least till tonight. And it covers a far greater range. Um, I totally misjudged this. I thought I knew where the path of the eye of the hurricane was. However, it was so wide. I'd based my, my, uh, my location on early reports and duh, things changed. Avoid them at all costs. And it doesn't matter what kind of vehicle you are in. Just don't go there. Get out as fast as you can. So next time I hear the word hurricane, I'm totally out of here. Well, I'm out of here now anyway. I'm going home. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my others as well. Oh, I need to dry off. I need a shower. My heart goes out to all those who are affected by the wrath of Fiona. And it never felt so good to be back in New Brunswick.